What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts, and I'm back with another video today. I'm going to be breaking down the new edition of Marcus Cannon. Nick swapped picks with the Patriots in the fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds to acquire Cannon. But the question on everyone's mind is where the hell is he playing? Do you give up the essential value of a fifth round pick and pay Cannon $13 million over the next two years? to just be a backup swing tackle? I certainly hope not. So do you have him play right tackle where he's played for the past five years? I don't like that one either because it would likely mean sliding Titus Howard to guard. And I'm not messing up my first round tackle who's improved every year, been a damn good pass blocker, and is only gonna get better with Mike Devlin out and James Campen in. I'm not messing with his Pro Bowl potential for just two years of Marcus Cannon. Nope, will not have it. So this signing was a bit of a question mark at first, but I'm going to show y'all where I think the Texans should and will be playing Cannon. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below what your thoughts are on the Texans' first day of free agency. Now, let's break down the film of Marcus Cannon because the film don't lie. So let's start by analyzing Cannon at right tackle, his natural position, and what I'm going to show you all is exactly why he should not be starting here for the Texans. On top of the reasons I mentioned before, Cannon just isn't even a good enough right tackle to warrant moving Titus. You're downgrading at the position by starting him there. So he's a big dude at 6'6", 335, but that size makes his foot speed far below average. He really struggles with stopping outside rushes, especially if the defender has some speed to them. Jacob the GOAT Martin blew by him two times in their 2019 matchup and straight roasted him like fried chicken. Cannon also struggles with identifying and containing stunts. He doesn't have quick enough feet to recover and his punch is barely enough to keep Omenhu out of this play. And that's the next thing about Cannon. While he's a huge dude, he's not super powerful in pass protection. He struggles to land his punch and really knock back a defender. But even when he does land that punch, it's not like they instantly get locked out of the play. He struggles to get hands on the defender first and often allows guys into his chest, leaving him at a disadvantage. Something about timing his punch when the edge rusher can, can build up speed on the edge just really messes with him. So Cannon has some major limitations at tackle, and let me repeat, should not be played there. However, he can still bring value to this Texans team if he moves to guard. Playing on the inside can help mask a lot of his natural limitations with foot speed and punch timing that we saw in pass protection. And Cannon played left guard with the Patriots back in 2014, so he has some experience to make the switch back. He's reportedly in fantastic shape and this would honestly be the best way to utilize his skill set in my opinion. Moving Cannon to guard really makes him less of a liability in pass pro, where he doesn't have to play in space and worry about which direction a rusher could be going. Here, the linebacker is blitzing but things are simplified for Cannon. He punches first for once and lands a damn good hit to his mouth, shutting down the rush. Now I don't know if it was the coaching or the position change, but Cannon just seemed much more willing to be aggressive and strike first at guard. And see how his length is just such an advantage when lined up inside? The defensive tackle can't even sniff Cannon, let alone Tom Brady. Now I don't want y'all to think he's going to be a complete lockdown pass protector at guard, those slow feet still rear their ugly head every once in a while even on the interior, but that issue should be masked much better at guard. Now let's get to the really fun part, and that's what Cannon will allow the Texans to do in the run game. In my previous videos on Mark Ingram and Justin Britt, I talked about how the Texans are going to primarily run a power run scheme, and an instrumental element of power is having a giant offensive lineman who can pull and block in space. Enter Marcus Cannon. Power schemes are all about angles and blocking linebackers. While the center down blocks this defensive tackle, turning him away from the run, Cannon and the fullback work inside-outside responsibilities. So Cannon gets the first defender inside, close to the back of this offensive lineman, and the fullback blocks this first defender outside. With those two defenders blocked, 76 is supposed to get to this linebacker, but is late. But just look at all the space that should have been created. The Patriots asked Cannon to do this quite a lot, and while he wasn't the most consistent in always making contact on the linebacker, when he does, it's a thing of beauty. 
It helps out the other offensive linemen as well, because as usually on this combo block, the right guard and right tackle would have to work up to this linebacker. But, because Canning pulls and blocks him, the right tackle has extra time to work up to this linebacker instead, opening up a huge Russian lane. So, expect to see a lot of pulling from Cannon, and what I'm hoping this will help set up is the play-action game. Tim Kelly struggled to incorporate this into our scheme for a lot of reasons, but look at how the Patriots really make their passes look like runs by pulling Cannon. This causes the linebackers to bite down on the run fake and create a huge opening behind them. This deception is something that makes the quarterback and the entire offense's job easier, creating a big window to throw this quick slant. I hope Tim Kelly, Pep Hamilton, and Andy Bischoff can all work cohesively and add this element to our scheme. Let's keep it going though with Cannon and the run game because there are multiple aspects to this power run game. We saw Cannon can be a puller, but he can also make a back block to set up one of his teammates to pull. The Patriots run a counter here, and Cannon back blocks this defensive tackle, allowing the left tackle to go out and pull, helping spring the run. This type of block is all about angles and turning the defender away from the direction of the run. Cannon can do that with ease. Now the last type of block we could ask Cannon to make in this power scheme is a combo block. That's a double team where one of the offensive linemen needs to work off the double and block a linebacker. Now Cannon isn't super good at this, his power and size comes in handy in terms of driving the initial defensive tackle downfield, but he's not great at making contact on the linebacker. One hand isn't enough to really block them, and sometimes Cannon can't even make contact at all. I think he's much more consistent as a puller and back blocker, so hopefully they ask him to do that more often. The last thing I wanted to talk about and show y'all is why Cannon isn't a good fit in an outside zone scheme. That scheme requires mobility above all else, and as I've shown, Cannon just doesn't have the foot speed necessary. He can't make reach blocks, and he has to try so hard to cross the face of the defensive tackle that he pops up so high and thus can't play powerful with low leverage. So, he can't sustain that block. The Texans would be doing their players a big disservice if they ran an outside zone scheme. Offensive line play is so scheme dependent. No more fitting square pegs into round holes. Cannon has a ton of limitations, but also some very specific strengths. Use him wisely, Texans. Alright, that's gonna do it for the video. If you enjoy it, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Take care, everyone. Come back for more. And remember, the film don't lie.